In this video, we're going to take a detailed look at the virtual bench from National Instruments. This box has six instruments built into it. A logic analyzer, an oscilloscope, a function generator, digital multimeter, power supply, as well as eight general purpose I.O. pins. This unit is available for just under $2,000 in U.S. dollars. So we're going to take a look at each function in detail to see how it works. In order to take a look at a couple of the functions, we're going to use this circuit board, which is a mixed signal oscilloscope demo board that I created. For more information, visit the link below. I've got this board. First thing we got to do is apply power. So let's go ahead and, you know, connect the power up. One of the first things to notice is that the power supply uses a screw terminal quick connect connector style. Now I kind of understand why they use this style on the front of the panel, but I was really looking for more of a banana style connector to be able to connect up the cables I already own. Now I'm told that National Instruments does have an adapter that you can plug into the front, which provides banana connectors, but that means you got to add something onto the front. So for this board, I'm going to attach power. Now I'm just going to use some standard jumper headers. So I'm going to screw these into the connector. One thing to know about the power supply is that there's actually a triple output available. So there's a variable six volt, 25 volt, and negative 25 volt supply. The six volt supply goes up to one amp, while the 25 volt supplies can each do 0.5 amps or 500 milliamps. And right now, my board isn't really doing a whole lot. So what's going on? Did I miss something? Well, we have to turn the power supply on. Power is on the box, but not on the power supply. Well, the name virtual bench means that it's a virtual instrument. And so you need to use something to control it. So one option is to use USB and connect it to a PC. Another cool option is that the box does have Wi-Fi built in. And so you can also connect it, connect to it over Wi-Fi. The third option is to actually just use an iPad. There is actually a iPad application for the virtual pad. So in here, I'm going to go into my power supplies and I'm going to turn them on. And what do you know? Now I've got lights going. Now a couple of things about the power supply is that they actually do support current limiting. So you can actually limit the current as you turn on the device. And then the three supplies are actually program independently programmable. So to give you an idea of how well they've done with the iPad integration, I'm gonna tap on here, go into my current, and right now it's set to 500 milliamps. And so now I'm just going to dial in and say, well, I want to limit to 150 milliamps. Done. So my current limit's 150, and I'm outputting 5 volts. Nothing changes on the board. So let's watch what happens. Let's find out how, how low we can take this. So if I go into this slider, now you can actually, more like a virtual knob, is to control the device. And it's looking like this board actually draws less than 50 milliamps. I know that because I've dropped it down to about 50 milliamps and I'm still outputting five volts. All right, so I got the board going. Now let's go ahead and use the multimeter and just look at a couple of voltage points. So I'm gonna grab my multimeter bleeds. All the basic functions that you would expect to be available are there. DC, AC, both current and voltage, as well as resistance, continuity, and a diode check. And in fact, the diode check even includes a beep. But for now, I'm just going to go to DC voltage, and let's just, for the sake of something easy to measure, I'm going to take a look at the voltage across this diode. So one of the things to note is that it is an auto-ranging supply, and so in this case, I'm dropping 2.8 volts across this LED, which isn't a surprise because it's blue LEDs. Now, we could get into the other functions, such as current and resistance, but it works just, just like you would expect any multimeter. One thing to note, though, is that you can only use one of the multimeter functions at one time. And so this kind of bothered me a little bit only because in the past, in some of my videos, I've actually needed two multimeters. So while the virtual bench in general can do everything I need, I'd have to have another multimeter in order to monitor both voltage and current simultaneously. Now let's move on to the oscilloscope, which is a mixed signal oscilloscope. The reason I'm using this board is because it's basically just an ATmega328 
with eight of its output pins connected to LEDs, and then the outputs are counting up as a binary counter from zero to FF. Okay, so what actually happens right now is one of the bits is getting stuck. So let's see if we can use the oscilloscope to find that bit. I don't have anything too much to say about the oscilloscope probes. The probes included with the virtual bench are of nice quality. In fact, I'd say they're on par with what you'd normally get with a 50 or 100 megahertz scope. Something about the plastic actually feels really nice in your hands. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and touch onto one of my test points. And we can already see that we have a waveform on the screen. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and cheat and use the auto setup. The cool thing about the iPad application is that it's actually a, it works like an iPad application. So if I wanted to zoom in, I just use two fingers and zoom in on the signal. Um, it might seem like a small thing, but you know, this is actually one compromise I do like is that I don't have to go and twiddle knobs, which I can't always remember, is it left or right to make my signal big or small. Whereas with this guy, I just pinch and zoom. Now I will mention over on the Windows application that you can use the scroll wheel to do some of these actions as well. And so you get some fluency there, uh, but I just really like the way that the scope works with the iPad app. Okay, so I'm looking at this signal. It looks like it's toggling okay. Okay, so I could keep going through and look at each one of these signals individually, but remember, this is a mixed signal oscilloscope, and that means something special. So in fact, what I wanna do now is we're gonna hook up the logic pods. So this is a, basically a logic pod. This allows us to break out the 32 channels from the front and connect to individual pins. Here's two cons about the virtual bench. One which I think can be easily fixed, It's a or one that I expect will be fixed. Um, the iPad app doesn't support the logic pod. That's okay in just a minute. I'll fire up my laptop and we'll continue debugging from there. The other thing I'm not really a fan of is that the logic pods only come with, with headers. There are no mini grabbers included. You can buy some of these from National Instruments as an accessory. They cost about $15 four pack of six. So I have to buy six packs of mini grabbers at $15 each to get enough mini grabbers for each of my signals. Okay, now I've hooked up my PC, which is actually a Mac running Windows in a virtual machine, so that I can see the PC application connected to the virtual bench over USB. Keep in mind, you can also do this over Wi-Fi, but for a better update rate, I'm using USB. So what we see going on with the demo board is I've taken my two analog channels as well as the digital channels and connected them to digital zero through seven. Analog one and two are connected to digital zero and one. When we look at the screen, we can actually see all eight digital channels along with the two analog channels. Now what's really cool with MSOs is that the digital and analog channels are time correlated. So watch what happens when I drag the digital channel on top of the analog channel. I'm gonna stop the scope grab D1, and I can actually bring it down, and you can see it's time correlated. Now this is one of, now this ends up being, which I guess is a feature, but I might call it a bug. When I let go of the mouse button, the digital channel snaps back to stay with the other digital channels. And I find that just a little bit annoying because I do like to have them overlaid at times. The workaround is, of course, just to move around the analog channel. So if I go in, now I can zoom in, and I can see that my analog channel is time correlated with the digital channel. So when the analog channel goes from zero to one, so does the digital channel, it goes from zero to one. So you can think of digital channels as basically being like a one bit A to D. So there's a lot of power in using a mixed signal scope. You can also trigger on either analog or digital channels. You can even set up a pattern based on the digital channels. In terms of specifications, this scope is pretty impressive. It's a 100 megahertz analog bandwidth with 500 mega samples per second on each channel. If you're only using one channel, then they'll interleave to be one giga sample per second, which is more than enough digital sampling for 100 megahertz analog bandwidth. The scope also has a number of acquisition and display modes. So for example, you can turn on peak detect or average your waveforms, as well as turn on some amount of infinite persistence. Unfortunately, persistence isn't available in the iPad app. However, averaging is. Now let's take a quick look at the function generator. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I don't really use function generators that often. In fact, 
the pretty much the only reason I ever use my actual generator is to do something with the oscilloscope, like teach people how scopes work. So we're just gonna take a quick look, look at its functions. In terms of functionality, the generator can output a sine, square, or triangle wave, as well as a DC level. The sine wave, you can, you can output up to 20 megahertz, and the square wave, you can output up to five megahertz. And so in terms of basic functionality, I think the function generator works well there. Um, this is, um, I think, a good implementation of the offset as well as the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude. The graphical representation actually makes it a little more obvious to me how to use it than a traditional function generator. I just don't have a lot of love for function generators. And in fact, one of the trends I've noticed with standalone oscilloscopes is that more and more scopes are now coming with the function gen built in, which I think is a good way to go. Just like with the virtual bench, I'm glad it has the capability and I think it's a good function generator, uh, but I don't really usually need one. And so to me, this is just nice to have when you might actually need one. Then the last thing I wanna talk about is the digital IO. Um, not a whole lot to say here, but it's really nice to have eight general purpose IO pins. Now, the one thing to know is that in terms of input, they are five volt tolerant, but when they output, they only output 3.3 volts. So one of the common things you might do with it is say reset a microcontroller. It's gonna be difficult to do things like uh, receive serial data or something with this because all you get is an on-screen indication. So really it's more of a, a utility and not what I would call an instrument but I'm really glad they included it because very often I've met, had to make measurements where I wanted to do something like reset or wait for a signal to go high and then have the instrument do something. And so it's, it's just nice to have that there. Okay, now that we've taken a look at all the major functions of the virtual bench, you're probably asking, is this thing really worth $2,000? And the answer is, oh, I'm really sorry about this. Let me answer this real quick. Oh, it's Wells Fargo. Good afternoon, this is James speaking. Mm -hmm. So the check from National Instruments bounced. Uh-huh. All right, well, thanks for letting me know. <clears throat> um, as I was saying, uh, no, this thing is not worth $2,000. No, <laughs> okay, hold on. Just joking around here. Uh, the reality is for $2,000, you're getting a ton of value in one box. In fact, I very much think it's worth the price. Um, you get a 100 megahertz mixed signal oscilloscope, which by itself is almost a grand. And then you're talking about a DMM, programmable power supply, and the function generator all built into a single unit. Um, that's a great price. Um, in fact, I've got a whole bunch of equipment that's probably going to find itself getting replaced here in the near future. Real quick, let's just run down the pros and cons of the box. Number one, good specs for a good price. Number two, all the basic instruments that you're going to need in a lab. Number three, I really like the Wi-Fi capability because it makes it very usable in a shared environment. Four, the iPad is a nice touch as well as it's a, it's a good implementation for this type of test equipment. And lastly, the leads for the scope, logic analyzer, and multimeter are all really good quality. Now for a few of the cons. Number one, I think it's kind of cheap that there were no mini grabbers included with the device. Um, even just a small number to help in situations where you just need one or two quick signals. The second thing is I'm not a big fan of the quick connect style connectors on the power supply. It doesn't bother me about the general purpose IO, but on the power supply, I really feel like this should have been banana connectors. And I, like others, have a whole bunch of those cables just lying around already. And then the last con is just that there's not feature parity between the Windows app and the iPad app. But I'm not gonna knock that too hard because the basic functionality is there and the iPad app is probably going to evolve over time. Functions inside of the box are probably gonna evolve over time. And so I think there's a lot of good functionality here for the price. I'm pretty excited to see where this instrument goes. And as for my existing equipment, you might wanna start watching me on eBay. For my full write-up, visit boldengineer.com slash virtual bench. If you have any questions about the virtual bench, leave comments with this video or send them to me via Twitter and Facebook. You can find me using the word bald engineer. Mm -hmm.